फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट मिस्टर वाइस चेयरमैन सर बाय मूविंग दिस बिल फॉर कंसिडरेशन माई ऑनरेबल फ्रेंड हैज रेस्ड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन अफेक्टिंग पब्लिक लाइफ देयर कुड बी एब्सोल्यूटली नो मैटर ऑफ डाउट दैट द करप्शन इन पब्लिक लाइफ हैज बिकम रेम्पेंट एज ए रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस पीपल इन पब्लिक लाइफ हैव बिकम ग्रेट सस्पेक्ट्स इन ए सेमिनार विच आई वॉज अटेंडिंग ऑन कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट फॉर पब्लिक मैन somebody observed that once a man becomes a minister occupies a seat of power for generations his economic problems are solved it may be an exaggerated statement but it has been our sad experience that people who have occupied high positions in public life who have become ministers members of parliament or members of legislatures have overnight become affluent persons this may not be true of all members of parliament this may not be true of all members of legislatures this may not be true of all ministers but quite a large number of them have overnight become so affluent that it becomes really difficult for any man to understand how the man become so affluent the whole thing becomes a mystery to the common man and the character and integrity of the person concerned becomes highly suspect i know sir that it would be too much to expect the same standard of public behavior as we had during the days of ramayana those who were in charge of administration those who were occupying the highest office put themselves to the highest form of test the highest form of ordeal can there be any doubt that public life if so much corrupted today that we have all become suspect in fact the people have also become jealous of the members of parliament they say somehow one has got to become a member of parliament or a member of legislature or somehow come closer to the corridors of power why do they say this because they see the sudden change in the outlook the behavior the kind of living of a particular individual but sir the solution in this problem of corruption in public life may not be like instant coffee the solution may be very difficult in fact this was pointed out by the santhanam committee itself in its report it made certain recommendations that a certain code of conduct should be there and that shall be a solution to end corruption in public life what has actually troubled us is the variance between precept and practice in this country when we discuss philosophy we rise to himalayan heights and when it is a question of personal life we go to the abysmal depth of the arabian sea there is so much variance between precept and practice in this country that even if a particular individual might be trying to adhere to the precepts he also becomes suspect because the general atmosphere is one of suspicion 
In that context, sir, I feel that something has got to be done to restore the confidence of the people in the members of parliament, in the members of legislatures, and in the ministers. Now, my friend made a suggestion that after all, we are all answerable to the people in this country and when representatives come through elections and people vote for them, that is a sure proof of the people's confidence in those elected representatives. I would respectfully differ from my friend on this kind of a diagnosis or analysis of the problem that electorally everything can be solved. The problem of human character, human integrity, human behavior, morality cannot be solved by an electoral process. There have been men in the world who are of great moral stature, men of great character and integrity, but they never won an election. Are we not aware of Mr. Raja Gopalachari, who was a man of great character and integrity? Nothing can be said against him. He was a man of high moral stature, but he never won an election. He was also defeated in an election. Let us not try to beguile ourselves by saying that by our being electorally established, our character is established, our integrity is established, our moral standard is established. After all, the kind of electoral system that we have in this country itself corrupts the entire political system, the entire politics in this country. How many of us can claim that we limit ourselves to the amount prescribed in the representation of the people at when we contest an election? Which member of parliament does not spend above that amount? How many of us file a true return in compliance with the provisions of the representation of the People Act? Most of the candidates file false returns, and this has been taken as an accepted way of life. Therefore, we should not expect that once it is electorally established that somebody has been elected. He must automatically be deemed to be a man of character, a man of integrity, and so on and so forth. Such a proposition, at least, I personally cannot accept. Stop.